Have you ever wanted to build a generative AI application but not too sure where to even start? Hi, I'm Lucy, an ex-AWS Solutions Architect, and in this video, I'll walk you through how you can build your own generative AI application using Party Rock, an Amazon Bedrock playground. Now, if you haven't heard of Party Rock before, it's something created by AWS to help you build applications easily and quickly using AI. You don't need to be a developer with a high level of tech experience to get started with building. In fact, you don't even need prior experience with the cloud or AWS. And so this video is going to be a build with me session where I'll share a step-by-step -step walkthrough to help you create your own application using Party Rock. What we'll build today is a personal cloud computing advisor to help provide guidance for cloud learners. The cool part is once you build it out, you'll be able to use the application as a tool for your own cloud learning journey. Before we get started, please give this video a like and comment below with the phrase let's build together. I also have a weekly email newsletter called cloudbytes.ai where I share bite-sized learning tips on cloud and AI. So feel free to sign up to that as well. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing we want to do is head to the Party Rock website. Type in partyrock.aws into your browser. Click on the build your own app option and you'll be asked to provide a description of what you want the application to do. So this is what I'm going to type in. Create a cloud computing advisor application that gives advice for the following inputs, project ideas, troubleshooting errors, and cloud topic learning advisor. Click on generate and Party Rock will now take this prompt as input and interpret it to generate an application. Now you can just sit back, relax for a minute and let Party Rock build the application for you. So what happens behind the scenes here is that Party Rock would take this prompt as an input and interpret it to create an application. The important thing to note here is the significance of prompt engineering while writing your prompts. If you haven't heard of prompt engineering before, it pretty much refers to the process of structuring your text in a way to effectively guide AI models in generating the desired outputs. The prompts you enter should ideally be detailed and specific to your requirements in order to get an application that's closer to your expectations. So anyways, if you're interested in learning more about how to write good prompts, I've included a prompt engineering guide created by AWS in the description below. All right, so now that our app has been created, let's have a look at the components. You can see that the title of the application has been named Cloud Compass and there are a few widgets. There's user input, cloud advisor response, as well as interactive chat. So what happens is everyone's applications would look different even if the same prompt is provided. And so it's okay if your application looks different to mine. Now let's just give it a go and play around with this application. I'm going to enter a user input. So let's say I want to create a generative AI application on AWS. Let's see what it comes up with. I'm going to click on play and give it a moment to generate the output. As you can see here, it's already generating the project idea and approach, technologies and considerations, and it's giving me additional information on how I can build my generative AI application in the cloud. It's also suggesting the topics I should learn as well as AWS resources that I can refer to, such as documentation and developer forums. So already you can see that this application is pretty helpful in not just helping you learn how to build a Party Rock app, but also you can use it as your own cloud computing advisor, which is pretty cool. There's also an interactive chat where you can ask further questions. So let's say something like, I'm not sure how EC2 works. And then it goes ahead to explain what Amazon EC2 is and provides more information. So pretty much as soon as we enter a prompt and press play, you can see that the application goes to work to generate the output. I also have an option to click on pause. And this option is helpful if you want to change your mind and don't want to see the complete output. Okay, now that we've explored the application, let's have a look at how we can further customize it and make modifications. So you can see in the top right corner, there's an option to edit your app. And now I'm able to make some adjustments. I can add a widget, so for example, there's user input widgets, static text, document, as well as image, text, and chatbot. So for example, I'm going to click on text generation. You can see here that I can add a new widget. I'm going to name it cloud tutor. 
So Party Rock provides quite a few different models. For example, you can see there's Claude, Titan, and Jurassic. And what you can do is experiment with the different models to see which one is the most suitable for you. One thing you might have noticed is that there are black bars next to each model. So the black bars actually represent real-world token cost equivalents of the various models, which means that even though Party Rock is a free tool, these bars actually represent how much the models will cost. In Party Rock, the more bars means the more credits being consumed. I'd also like to point out that Claude 3 Q and Claude 3 Sonnet models are now available in Party Rock, and these models are known for being good at following complex multi-step instructions. Okay, let me just very quickly add in this new widget. I'm going to type in for the prompt, act as a cloud computing tutor and explain things like I am five. Cool, so now we have an additional cloud tutor widget. And you can see that once I press play, it tried to explain cloud computing in a way that a five-year-old can understand. So this widget, of course, is just an output widget, but if you'd like to customize your inputs, you would have to add another input one and link it with this output widget. I want to show you that you can actually edit the size of these widgets and rearrange them in a way that best works for you. So I can drag these to be as big and small as I like. And what I want to do here is make them so that they all fit within one screen so that I can see all of my widgets at the same time. Cool, so this all looks pretty good and I'd recommend spending more time to play around with all the different features. For example, adding image generation, editing your widgets and creating additional ones. One final feature I'd like to point out is that under each of these output widgets, you can actually further customize the prompt. So based on our initial prompt for the application, this is the prompt that was generated for the widget. Let's say I want to provide some additional context. I can enter something like sound very friendly and approachable in your tone. I can also add in make your suggestions specific to people who are completely new to cloud. And then when I press save and reload my application, you'll see that immediately the tone is more friendly. Anyways, once you're happy with the application and have tailored it to fit your needs, you're now ready to publish it and share it with the world. If you want others to also access and use your application, you can choose to make it public. So let's leave these edit settings and click on make public and share. Cool, okay, congratulations. Your application is now public and you'll be able to use this custom generated link to make your application accessible to those you share the link to. You can also choose to create a snapshot of your application. And what this does is publish this specific output that the application has created. And so if you'd like all of this information you got from the app to be shared, you can snapshot it and that will save all the output that it generated. The way you do this is by clicking on this camera option and now it's taking a snapshot. Nice, okay, so here's the snapshot and you can choose to copy this link and share this snapshot with others. All right, now that we've built our application, it's now time to discuss what Party Rock can be used for. So in general, this is great for creating applications that can make your everyday life easier. For example, trip planners, organizers, and entertainment tools. People have also used Party Rock in a few creative ways. One of my favorite applications that I've seen is one that recommends good food places based on the location, cuisine, and the meal that you type in. Like anything, however, Party Rock has its limitations. The main thing to point out is that it's not an enterprise solution for building things for businesses or for professional use. It's fun and helpful for personal use cases, but because we're using base foundation models without any customization or fine tuning, it's not as powerful compared to services like Amazon Bedrock and Amazon Q in the AWS console. And so for organizations looking to connect their business data securely in a way that helps keep their data private, Amazon Bedrock would be what I recommend checking out. It allows you to customize your base foundation model and use techniques like RAG and fine tuning. All right, so this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found the Build With Me session fun and helpful. Please let me know in the comments what applications you end up building and I look forward to seeing it. And one more thing, I'd like to mention that there's actually a Party Rock Discord server you can join to share your applications and connect with other users. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now!